Tonight, learn why students gathered in protest on the mall. And an update on the case alleging sexual misconduct against a local police officer earlier this year. And what the Greek community plans to implement to target issues surrounding mental health and sexual violence. Murrow News 8 starts now. From Studio B on the campus of Washington State University, this is Pullman's only nightly newscast. This is Murrow News 8. Good evening, I'm Matt King. And I'm Dax McCoy. Welcome to Murrow News 8. Students gathered on this morning on Terrell Mall to protest the Supreme Court nominee, Brett Kavanaugh. We go live to Emma Jerome on the mall with more details on what motivated the protest. Emma? I actually got here earlier today and I had the opportunity to speak with a few protesters about their feelings on Kavanaugh. This morning, protesters took to Glen Terrell Mall to demonstrate their feelings about Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. We're bringing awareness to what's going on currently at the Supreme Court level um, with the nomination of Brett Kavanaugh and the sexual assault allegations plus the lying on in his hearing in his um, job application, honestly. We're just letting people know that that's what's going on and that there is a method of action that they can take. What began as a Facebook event organized by WSU Young Democrats, the ACLU, and Planned Parenthood with the purpose of protesting Kavanaugh's appointment to the Supreme Court quickly turned into talk from both sides about what the appointment would mean to them. A successful Kavanaugh confirmation would mean that the American right, and frankly not even just the American right, just decent normal people, are not going to stand for false accusations and this politics of personal destruction that the left is trying to use. So to me, that would be saying that this type of behavior is okay, and it's okay for 15, 16 year old girls to be harassed by old men on a daily basis, and that's just not acceptable, and that's not the America I want to live in. Eventually, the conversation switched from Kavanaugh's judicial record to the credibility of sexual assault claims and who should receive the benefit of the doubt. Look, we'd love to be in a position where we could believe women, where we could trust women when they make accusations, but unfortunately, because so many allegations are fake, uh, we're not in that position. According to an NPR Marist poll, the Kavanaugh nomination has energized voting on all sides. While today's demonstration didn't end in a resolution, it exposed people to two sides of the same story. On Wednesdays, we wear pink in protest. In accordance with the recommendation from the Senate Judiciary Committee, some anticipate that a final ruling on whether or not the Senate will confirm Kavanaugh to come as early as this Friday. Reporting live from Terrell Mall, Emma Jerome, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Emma. The Pullman Police Department placed a sergeant on paid administrative leave Monday after an 18-year-old WSU student filed a sexual misconduct complaint with the Office of Equal Opportunity. She claimed the incident took place when she accepted a courtesy ride back to her dorm from a Pullman police sergeant while she appeared intoxicated. The Washington State Patrol will conduct an investigation into the officer. The alleged sexual misconduct took place back in April, and a Whitman County prosecutor will decide on possible charges. The WSU Panhellenic and IFC councils look to introduce a new position to each board in their next elections. Canera Heinke found out more about this new position and the motive for its creation. Sexual abuse and mental health matters continue to affect college campuses across the nation. In response to these issues, the WSU Panhellenic and Interfraternity Councils recently have decided to introduce a new position called Vice President of Equity and Inclusion that focuses on these topics. I think it will be very helpful, especially because I think they're targeted towards new members in the Greek community and they're already coming towards in college with all these things going on. Panhellenic President Anna McLeod and IFC Vice President Andrew Ludke wanted to find a way to track and minimize mental health and sexual violence concerns. They later discovered that this job requires an entire new position in order to make it the most effective. And we started working on different ways that we can track all those things in our community and reduce um, all of the sexual violence. Um, and so we started putting in a lot of time, and then Andrew and I kind of realized that we were lacking in our positions just because we needed more time in the day. The Interfraternity and Panhellenic Council can be found in Office 302 in the Compton Union Building. Each chapter on campus plans to propose the idea to their members. Members of the Greek community have the opportunity to vote on the new position in order to move it to the finishing phases not voted yet, but I do plan on voting yes because I think it will be beneficial to the members of our Greek community. 
Applications for positions on Panhellenic and IFC remain open. Kinnera Heinke, Moreau News 8. Water, a necessity of life, will continue to sustain humans for the rest of mankind's time on Earth. Washington State's Water Research Center, WRC, received a $5 million grant from the United States Department of Agriculture to find ways to help water flow more efficiently so it can reach areas like farms and rivers easier. Project Director Kurti Rajagopalon and her team of researchers involved in this project work towards a common goal, improving the efficiency of water flow in Washington State. When we come back, we'll tell you why Pullman residents could soon see an increase in their property taxes. And an update on Whitman County's fire ban. Stay with us. It's so good to be here, guys. So, what's up? Oh, we finally bought a place. Holy cow. You seriously have enough saved to do that? We've been putting a little aside each month. Jeez, at the end of the month, we have nothing left to save. Yeah, I have no idea where it goes. Well, you're mm -hmm. spending a lot on... <laughs> Was it good? Oh, God. Oh, how is my account overdrawn? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. This is the moment I knew. His future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Pullman Regional Hospital officials accepted public comment tonight on a project, proposed project that could lead to a property tax increase. The project called Next Era of Excellence would use $40 million to construct an additional 45,000 square foot facility for Pullman Regional Hospital. The facility would provide a variety of medical services and serve as a one-stop care patient experience. A bond like this would increase Pullman's property taxes by about a dollar for every thousand dollars of assessed value. The Moscow School District will host a series of open houses to discuss a new levy increase proposal on the November ballot. The school board plans to ask for a $2 million increase to the district's indefinite levy, increasing its annual amount to almost $11.5 million. The first of these meetings will start tomorrow night in the district office of Cleveland Street at 6.30 p.m. Well, good news if you want to go camping and have a campfire again. Whitman County Park officials announced that they lifted most of their fire bans Tuesday. They now allow campfires at Kamiak Boot and Klemgard County Parks. They will also permit campfires along the Chipman Trail between Pullman and Moscow, but fire bans will remain in place at Wawai County Park along the Snake River west of Pullman until October 10th. You a big camping guy? Yeah, I'm, I really do enjoy my camping trips that I've gone on with my family. I love family, the dogs, it's just a great time. Tomorrow's forecast may say some, may include some rain. When we come back, Patrick Gerardis will bring you your weather forecast. Stay tuned. Can't wait for some more rain. Good one, son. Last summer, my new dad took me on vacation. First, we went uh, deep sea fishing. Wow! I'm so proud of you, son. And then we went on Thunder Shark. That was awesome! Let's go again! Three times. I gotta say, it was pretty cool. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Oh, not again. If you want to be a parent, it doesn't matter how you play, what you wear, how you dance, or even what direction life takes you. You just need to be there. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care don't need perfection. They just need you. Well, fall sure has made its presence felt this week. Yeah, I felt the cooler temperatures and I even felt some rain hit my head. Let's check in with Patrick. Hey Patrick, will we experience more of that? Well, Dax, let's see. Uh, today's high is 58 and with an average of 67. It's 52, a dew point of 26, humidity 37%, and a four mile an hour wind. Those are today's weather conditions. 
And uh, if we see over here, here in Pullman, we have a high of 58 and a low of 37. We should see the sun out. Over up in Spokane, we have a low of uh, we have a high of 59, a low of 37. And uh, over to Wenatchee, we have a high of 57, a low of 39. Partly cloudy, should see a little sun. And over in Yakima, high of 61, low of 36. Again, partly cloudy. Over in Seattle to the west, we uh, see it's pretty cloudy. But uh, high of 59, low of 48, and uh, now over to the west. Uh, Olympia, we got a high of 59, low of 36, partly cloudy, you should see a bit of sun. And in Vancouver, it's pretty cloudy, high of 66, low of 44. So there you have it. And uh, tomorrow morning, it should be uh, partly cloudy, but you should see the sun out. It's uh, about 40 degrees uh, in the afternoon. We should see some rain, and uh, it'll be 52 degrees approximately. And uh, in the evening, it should be pretty quiet at uh, 50 degrees, so yeah. And uh, Friday, uh, it's pretty cloudy, a high of 56 and a low of 39. Uh, we should see some rain on Saturday with, it should be range from 35 to 56 degrees. Um, on Sunday, we should see a bit of sun, but uh, it's partly cloudy. So uh, high of 58, low of 36, and uh, Monday, same thing, only a bit more sun. And uh, on Tuesday, it should be pretty cloudy, high of 55, low of 33. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Patrick. Next, Apple gives a thumbs up to a new set of emojis you will see in their new update. <laughs> what will they add this time? You won't want to miss it. I like texting. Can you help me with this? My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Mm. Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be 3.6795. Thanks. Yep. He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. No telling what you'll find. I see it, I see it. Oh, look at you. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. <laughs> find yours at discovertheforest.org. Oh, Ryan Ulrich of Spokane created a built and, excuse me, he created and built a Hobbit house inspired by the Hobbit holes in J.R.R. Tolkien's books. Five feet by 4.8 feet, the house stands tall enough for people, but in the books, they were only two to four feet tall. Ulrich has loved the films and books since fourth grade. He makes balloon art and founded Spokane Sidewalk Games, where people can play oversized board games on the streets of downtown Spokane. Ulrich says creating the Hobbit house brought out his inner nerd. <laughs> he now uses it as a home office and reading book. Isn't that cute? Do you ever find your text messages missing some llama drama? Don't worry. A llama emoji will come out next week with a new Apple update, along with several others. Apple iPhone and iPad users will see 70 new emojis with an update to iOS 12.1 later this month. Some of the new emojis include a llama, a belga, a salt, a frisbee, and an Asian-inspired red envelope for New Year's back in July. On World Emoji Day, Apple previewed some of the new options, but soon you can send them yourself. Isn't that a story for all of us worth telling? Do you guys use emojis when you're texting? I sometimes. Don't, but sometimes, yeah, I love them. Thank you for watching tonight. Join us every weeknight at 7 and 10 for Pullman's only nightly newscast. Have a great evening, and don't forget to follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. Good night, Pullman. Those emojis. I like telling those right. emojis.